Here we go. Um, so our first, first poet for the night here at Blast Your Own Breath on April 18th is Bronwyn Shumway, who is a longtime friend and a poet. A person, I, I meet a lot of my friends through poetry. So uh, first you're a poet usually in my life and then you, know, you, you slide on in into being a friend and extended family member. That's how I know many of uh, the folks here tonight. Um, so, Brahmin, you've lived in various places, but I've managed to keep up with you as your family has sorted its way around the U.S. and you're back in Austin these days. Uh, I, know, I wound up back in Austin. Can you believe it? <laughs> so, every person who's featuring tonight's bio is in the Facebook event page, so I won't reread that out loud because everyone can read that. And I, in the interest of time, I just want to. Um, invite you, uh, Brahmin, to go ahead and grace us with your work. Oh, it's Brahmin you. Shumway, take it away. Thank you so much. And hello, um, everyone, and all of the poets and people who are logged in right now, uh, especially um, Abraham and Liliana, you know, whom I already know. So, um, first, if you'll permit me, before I actually read a poem, I really wanted to share. Um, a personal story of mine because I think that it might actually serve or help people during this time and it's the first time I've ever talked about it publicly um, so if you'll permit me I'll, I'll tell the story and I'll try to be quick about it um, as Tammy mentioned I think we were living in Chicago my little family in 2009 well we became a little family in 2009 when my daughter Landon was born our daughter Landon was born and um, everything was going swimmingly until about um, eight months after she was born and then I started experiencing some serious uh, postpartum blues postpartum depression really and didn't know what to do with it um, because it was a new brand of depression for me I'd experienced bouts of depression before in my life but never anything like this so I did reach out, reach out to a, my midwifery group at the time, and I did seek professional help. Um, I went to a, a couple of sessions, I don't know, one or two sessions with a therapist who actually ended up being quite awful. So I decided to take matters into my own hands. I'd been feeling compelled to write, um, but as a poet who was used to writing like my go-to was you know first person free verse confessional style i knew that if i did that at that moment in my life that it would not serve me well i knew that i would just spiral downwards um so i started uh, thinking well hey what what else can i do how else can i write how else can i maybe heal myself through writing if that's even possible because i don't actually feel <laughs> that that's always possible <laughs> um you know, I mentioned the spiral downwards. So um, I did wind up looking for form or formal poetry. And I was going through an old textbook and came across the poem, uh, Richard Corey, you know, written by Edward Arlington Robinson. I think it was first published, I have my notes, in 1897. And for those of you who might not be familiar with that poem, you might be more familiar with the, the um, Paul Simon song that was inspired by it, you know, Richard Corey owned one half of this whole town with political connections. You can see why I'm a poet and not a singer. Anyway, <laughs> you might be more familiar with that. But the form of the um, Robinson poem really spoke to me. And so I started writing these short ballads and I wrote them, you know, as Robinson did, not in the first person. And I chose to write them about women having different experiences other than my own. And I loved that they were just, you know, four stanzas or four verses each. The lines were just 10 syllables each. The rhyme scheme was A, B, A, B, C, D, C, D, whatever, pretty easy. 
Um, and it just spoke to me. And I loved that you could tell this short story in just four, you know, tiny stanzas. Um, so I set out to do this as a way of healing myself, writing about these other women and their stories in this form. And I thought that the form would actually hold me back. Um, but I found within it, and forgive me for those of you who have been, who have been writing in form for a long time, I, uh, I found such freedom within it and such room for exploration. It surprised the heck out of me and um, resulted in so many poems that I think are worthwhile. And in fact, to make a long story short, um, one of those poems written in that form wound up winning the Austin Poetry Society Award, which was judged by Naomi Shihab Nye when my family moved to Austin about a year and a half after my daughter was born. So um, it all came full circle <laughs> um, and seemed worthwhile, a worthwhile endeavor. And I, the reason I'm telling this whole story right now is because with COVID going on and with everything that's going on, I'm thinking so much about these new mothers or mothers with newborns and what they're going through. You're worried enough. And then to think about the COVID worries piled on top of that. And also thinking about, you know, the fathers and co-parents and partners and supporters of um, mothers who are going through it too. Uh, I just, my heart really truly goes out to you. So I'm telling this story in the hopes that it means something to you. But without further ado, let me uh, start out by reading the poem that won the award. And you know, I have weird feelings about contests and awards, like we all do, don't get me wrong. Um, you know, are they valid? What do they mean? Blah, 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 blah. Do they mean anything? But the fact that this one was judged by Naomi did mean a heck of a lot to me. Anyway, um, the poem that won is um, called Like Women on the Other Side of the World. She knew that it seemed like a waste of time, learning how to wind the clay into shapes, stacking and smoothing their wet, fork-scored lines, rubbing them out until her fingers ached. Afterwards, there was so little to show. A wrecked manicure and dried white knuckles, a lopsided mug or crooked bowl, nothing good for much more than a chuckle. And yet she looked forward to class each week, to thinking of women unlike herself, who without tools, brushes, sponges or sinks could make something fit for more than a shelf. If they on the other side of the world could take a slab of earth and make it sing, she too, born into every comfort, would learn to be useful and what that means. <laughs> okay, I have a little more time. So here's another one of the um, the um, form poems that I was talking about, one of the short ballads based on the, the poem I mentioned earlier. Um, this one was picked by my daughter actually for this series, my 11 year old daughter, she's 11 now. Uh, she really likes this one and it's a coming of age poem. Her family raised Georgia peaches. They raised pecans too. Well, didn't raise them so much as harvest them from a small grove where her brother liked to walk with girlfriends and where she had been forbidden to go. The rest of the land was for the peaches that like her were welcome all summer long to cover three fourths of the farm's acres, but then downright strong armed at the pecans. All her life, she'd been regaled with tall tales of shakers long dead shaking out evil and of young girls who could still hear them wail under the trees where they'd once kept vigil. Tonight, she's 15 and she won't listen. 
sneaking out unafraid, shoes in her hands to meet the boy. She won't be caught kissing out on the back forth, out under the pecans. <laughs> <laughs> That's sweet. And this uh, poem actually makes me think a little bit of you, Tammy. Uh, but I don't know. It's kind of about a, uh, a sassy lass. Uh, anyway, <laughs> back alley, back alley, Sally. <laughs> I don't know why. It's like about a truck driver, babe. I don't know why it makes me think of you, other than it mentions Mexico, which I don't know what that means. But anyway, um, it was here at the Mexico border that he wouldn't swear, spit, or start a fight. Just let down her hair, all that white water, and she'd leave him leaning on a street light. He'd say as if to explain one last look, but already she'd be in Jalisco. If a few honeyed words were all it took, she'd had to have given up the road long ago. Ear on the radio, dust on the road. She's on the last leg towards redemption with God knows a tough enough load to tow and to know women's house of correction. Why she'd turned out so bad, gotten so mean. Her mama used to say she didn't know. If she does make good, she'll do it running, running like rain since June to Hillisco. <laughs> I think, Tammy, actually it's that, I don't know, your rebel spirit is in there. <laughs> and I just wanna go to Mexico with you someday. Can we do that? After this COVID we stuff. Go everywhere right now. I, I'm so dying to vacation and staycation <laughs> with people. I, I'll have a, a staycation with everybody at my house. I just want cluster. I, I miss it so much. Me too. And I miss Mexico every day more than I ever have. It's weird. Anyway, um, those are the form poems that I was talking about. I have uh, some other like free verse stuff I can read, but I don't know if I've used up my time or not. Um, let's, let's roll back, because uh, we started a little bit late, and if we've got some time, we'll bring you back for one of those um, free form poems. How's that? Sure. Thank you so much. Um, uh, thank you. Yeah, of course. Um, so for our next person uh, to read, I haven't seen this person in many, many, many years, but I have very fond uh, recollections of our time together at, at the Taos Poetry Festival or Poetry Circus uh, years ago. So if you want to unmute yourself, Abraham, you're on in the spotlight now. So uh, welcome Abraham Smith, who is uh, speaking to us uh, physically from a little bit northwest of me. You want to tell us some more about that? Welcome, Abraham. Thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I'm up here uh, north of Salt Lake. Uh, uh, squeezed up against the Wasatch uh, range of mountains um, in a little town called Ogden, um, the most most diverse city in uh, in uh, Utah. Uh, there's a, a, tr a tr tremendously vast uh, uh, la la Latinx population here. So that's uh, a, a great majority of the of the citizenry speak Spanish only. So it's um, yeah, it's a, it's a it's a beautiful place to call home, and uh, I'm grateful to be out here teaching at Weber State University. And yeah, I think we hung out. Uh, golly, it's been moons. Uh, it, I was just uh, texting with Bron a little bit ago. I think 23 years ago at Ruta Maya there um, in Austin, we convened Bronman and I, uh, sharing time at open mics and rooting for one another. And yeah, at the Taos Poetry Circus, I think that was 1999 when we were there together, I'm pretty sure. So <laughs> the moons have dilated and shrunk in between them, but here we are. Um, uh, and it's just a, a great honor to hang out with y'all for a little while and to share a little work and hear from, from y'all. This is a chunk from a brand new manuscript that I kind of you know, never, you always think you finalized it and then you didn't, but uh, the other day I feel like I put a little ten stake in the dirt and feel that it's secured somewhat. And it's uh, one great big long poem that I'll read about eight minutes or nine minutes of for you right now. And the, the manuscript is called Humane Crockpot. And I'm uh, not really a narrative poet as you're about to hear. I'm more someone who's following the kind of warrens and sense of sound. <clears throat> 
So we'll just see what y'all make of this, but here comes some shout shouting for you. Uh, dear, dear weirdo, pick up a stick these days and it's snakes, and here it turns out we'll be just shy of eternally gone, almost always have been. Try sewing masks from long gone grandma's quilt stash, cock chin like the larger birds, sing. Crazy as 1661 dryers full of frozen blubber, chawn in the attic, here in harm nation, it's hard not to thin, thinking of the body, ma, as a broken cock pot, one of those old aluminum sneaky light percolator jobs, the rat tail hard kids used to scoop rock creek crayfish. Trick is they hit the gas in reverse and there ain't anything much more human than our gate great wide shadow circling down, shading cup on up over the sun. Bull shake hand what we done can't be undone. People season perpetual storm. Phone spine bent, plant river sunflower stuccoed and malicious in snow ice. Soon the nose will cut the heart open and blood will too run circular. Hot gold down the throat, reach for the egg under the hen and it's a snake too of the bull snake variety. Can't be blamed, warm is warm is warm is warm. Even when your roof's a darn gone gonzo fidget spinner. Hey, hey, it's jughead egg life, ma. And I hate to see you smelling like rubber stood on while leg traps snap hearts freak behind sling wing bar javelin got a boomerang tendency and in some countries it ain't even noon noon briefest taste watchful jail light sugar surge weave we've easy mail in made a self at rat rat expense of all others dished and steaming you're still working tell me when to take it away it is the eye patch over your heart, heart. It tar the tailings oaten in my lowbrow right shoe. Try and dream on that med, just try. When all you see in sleep is seep by some shedding sandstone. And a wolf with a house cat, she's cleaning down to tasty there, there. Cat come to water, it's a selfie life. And we all, we all come to be by many. Yet travels, flavor, wanders, radical gratitudes too. Off the saddle glad path, was that my sandwich or your hand? Go book a read back. Backwards. Go try, flip true, wrinkles on the ski off the skin, and the innocence is pre-tread, newest dust in America upheld by trembling peach fuss. Perchance Robin pronounces new day with an umlaut over the dream of the invention of a first plow, fashioned of hawk wing, dragged along the prairie, scathed, no, unzip everything, no, held shut, rooted in as is, only higher sages, a little tickled, chuckle the bees off, eight, nine seconds, then things resettle, hold the pick in place with the kicked can full of backwash. My earliest memory, I am before grades. There is a patch of grass, the watcher, you kids go collide there. I go to take a drink of Pepsi free and a bumblebee kittens from the sip hole, all bare done sleepy in a trash sack for clothes. Rides her thorn on to who knows. And I begin to harbor the image, which costs you, reader, based on all this wash of flat rate chat to come, maybe less than the faucet leak, whose rounding pearl gets a gut full and descends quieter than a sunflower seed down a ball player deep, deep left field, old gimp shrimp at the plate, maybe more, last year, remodel like new. Barley, Harley, tell me, honey, eth it all, EpiPen, where's that bumble gone? Long about half there were, gone, gone. The blues these days go the wide world round. Godwin the painters, 
go over the fences, and the brush is tuned to poking sticks for nothing finer than kid spites on pets hateful of fences. And that cat, double named, dreams every fence of fire and how to let the flowers talk to flowers. Well, the way I heard it from YouTube is, you hold your grass face plant and paint bowl and go out walking, sopping and dripping to sousaphone them little blarers with none but your hairs, brights the cave, the world, a bunch of lichen elk ribs from which to build a boat before you drown in slow sand. And God is a buffalo chewing on a phone book beside Margot Price. Keeps on snowing sky high, cry high in them bad old days between the stems of two, three bitter oleanders, knives and forks and spoons, climbing thrown up fish in line, the wind takes to fumbling there upon the front porch. I can think of trick out no better future for my bones than wind chimes, translating obeisance into something danceable. Go on up and ride your ghost mule, y'all. All over Porchy Graveyard, computer chairs getting their lean on. And though the chairs may preserve the languished angle of the accident, and though the old dogs may stunt fat as wood ticks fit to burst from lumberjack anger blood, no, you can't cut them mad. Can't get at a mint rich tower or cheek bit like that. Else old pine will sense it and old woodpecker too. Falling as she flies with the moody maestro move of the factory machine where they sew faux sequin pockets into the denim cough asses. But ain't a sequin faux glory to begin with says this dagger crocus teacher chipmunk inhaled too much ether for a barrel fire Tuesday. And this year white pine tastes a little like sequoia blood. If I'm peaching on this chainsaw buck bucks like trying to endless hold a totally big fish. And what seemed so slow to start to tip is sudden upon you as in the dentist x-ray aprons flying from the closet much haste moth sunder square up upon the screwed drool of your heart and just like everything everything flares as it outgoes itself old drool dog mean through from all that living room living sandbagging riot self against the bay window well, Pokemon Go funsters with them staple guns frozen in sidewalk ice eyes in pajama bottoms whose stains recall aerial views of IOA pig farms. Scoop and stoop and snoop and starve Grace out. Wren says no. Wren alights like a painful to Henry David throw palm full of pencil dust Yes, and the snow phantom limbing the birches bronchioles walks a hanky out a train window in a movie down. Walks a hanky out a train window in a movie down. Humane Crockpot, that's a chuck from a new manuscript. Thanks for letting me yell that at you. Wow. Hey, mic's up, mic's on, everybody. If you want to just give a shout out to, to Jim. That ass, dude. Woo. Woo. Take a breath, take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Hola, uh, you, you said Hola. it was <laughs> seven or eight minutes. Uh, you know, that went so so intense and so frenetic it, it 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 really only felt like four or five minutes abraham so i don't know had you done a time reading uh of this beforehand no i was just flickering my eyeball up at the little clock in the corner so I was watching. okay yeah. well if you got another chunklet uh, there, uh, 
you know, you, you, you got some time if you want to do that. Let's see, I'll read you the, the last two pages of it. If you're, if uh, it goes on for 72 breathless uh, pages uh, and then it ends. So I guess I'll read you the end. Oh, can I ask, when did you begin this? I've been working on this, dicing it up and splicing it and grafting it for, for <clears throat> long about a year, I think. So, okay. yeah. So a lot of it is sort of watershed, newer stuff, but there's some old things that I've been, that I've been fussing with for, for around about a, about a year. So, yeah. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. Thanks for asking for one last little chunk. I will, I will go down the last couple pages. I was just trying, oh, you know, to throw a few little dollops of, of hope here at the end. Uh, Thanks. And there's a lot about my grandma who passed away this year. As Greg Brown, my favorite folk singer, along with Towns Van Zandt and um, a few others says, uh, wisdom is passed down by the grandmothers. And I believe that to be very, very much truth. <clears throat> and uh, my grandma passed away this year at 101 this last summer. And so she's in the end of this too. And she's throughout the whole thing. She said, are you going to church? She didn't ask, slow as the cat is dead. And the earth lushes her comforting name. Clay, slow furniture, how I breathe. Oh, crane, you canary, each breath link, each brain chain. When proffering this circle, take it in hand, in hand and tear raggedly free, unsteady, stirring, gets a stick in the river, a kid, a clock, a face, odd how tug can be a settling rounder. This is your comfort soup, take and eat, she says, and I do. And I never had anything other than the only thing I almost had, says the gravel incorrigible to the criminal wind. Gonna turn it all around once I kill this gate. This the lifted river crawling, this the stick. This the wax wings triangle head leaned against another. That's the square deal, the song of the wine her dead hand made. Ground in muse, most musical. Oven mitts for mittens, backlit by the sun, eaten by oceans of cold. She then angels upon the setting one. And I begin again to sing to you. Greens or reds, that's yours to choose. The barns and rhubarbs and rutabagas rise as they fall. Dig and unfurl. The coal train is curling. The frack, you mean. The middle is ours. Tomorrow is early. Tonight is high noon. Our legs are not tables swallowed by elbows. The windows jerking with strangers. We can go there. Opposite direction, the window teaches ends. We can go there and be known for love. Can go there by feel, as does the wind. We can. Lovely. We can. We can. We can. We can. Beautiful. Thank you. Oh, no, Abraham, that makes me think. I love Supreme. I love oh, Supreme Coltrane. Coltrane. Yeah. Yeah. Hey Abraham, I know you've got you've got a handful of books out in print right now, and I just have a quick question. I'm curious, uh, which of the publishers you've worked with seem to like really, um, uh, really be, you know, like the best to work with with the kind of work that you produce? Uh, just to give a kind of a, you know, an idea for folks of you know our nature who you know don't always you know easily find a a publisher that matches our work so well. Any thoughts on that? Well, I, I was just, I've been very lucky. I spent uh, <clears throat> the lion's share of my time so far publishing with Action Books, uh, which is housed uh, up at Notre Dame. And it's just a radical press um, uh, uh, interested in breaking every rule that could be. And um, it's just a place of kind of like a punk kind of mentality. It's primarily now a translation press. Um, and it's run by Johannes Gorenson, 
uh, who's a great poet, and uh, Joyelle McSweeney, who's a, a phenomenal poet as well. She has a new book out in the world that was reviewed recently in the New York Times, I think in New York or two. Joyelle McSweeney <clears throat> and Johannes Gorenson are such wonderful poets and such great advocates for writing and art that kind of stays in the emergency zone. So I was very fortunate to be with them for a long time, and then I hopped over and had the, and had the great fortune to, to spend the last few years working with Third Man Records in Nashville um, and Third Man Books, their book imprint. And that was a great fit for me too, just because of my way of, um, I don't know, of being a performative person that began way back when in Austin and continues with my shouting to this day. And so being w with a music place was a, a sweet fit too. And now I'm back out in the breeze. Um, um, like many of the rest of y'all, like, you know, hunting for my next um, uh, publishing home. But action books, I can't recommend enough, and third man uh, books as well. I've just been lucky. Yeah. Is action, A-C-T-I-O-N, action? Yeah. It's primarily a translation press at this point. They do Korean poets, they do uh, South American poets, poets from Mexico, poets from th those three places mainly. Um, um, they're, they're, they're a tremendous, tremendous place. If you're looking for, um, you know, what's going on on the radical side of art right now, I can't recommend that press enough. So, and Wonderful. Your man is a great place too. The, the editor there, Chet Wisey, is himself a, a marvelous poet uh, and, and musician. So sweet places both. You know, Spork is another cool kind of... Uh, Punk Press uh, um, publishing some really cool stuff right now. And the Spork is run by Richard Sykin. Um, he's the and Drew Burke in um, Tucson. So that's another great one to check out. Right on. So in the chat area, if you could drop your, uh, um, you know, your how to reach, you know, Abraham, any sure. like IG, all your social media stuff, or you know. Venmo, PayPal, and, you know, Brahman, feel free to add that stuff on too. Don't be shy, folks. And thank you so much for your time here with us. You're going to hang out and hear the others? I'll be here. I'm grateful okay. to be. Well, thank you, Ted. Yeah, yeah we, we will all value your feedback as we will value everybody's uh, comments and input and raised fingers, as always. Um, next up, we have Liliana Valenzuela, who is... Um, uh, a notable translator, speaking of translation, of uh, works in originally in Spanish. Um, Liliana is also a poet in her own right and has um, a new book out that I am making my way through, uh, Codex of Love. And look, I've got a mark here. Liliana, I'm right here. I'm not quite finished, but I'm enjoying it thoroughly. So Liliana, you're up next. Liliana Valenzuela is... Um, Sheltering up with beautiful family in Austin, Texas. Hey, thank you, Tommy. Hi, everyone. Good to be here. I love that thing about poets in the emergency zone. <laughs> Seems like we're all in the emergency zone in these days. And uh, with that in mind, I thought I would read a, a new poem inspired by this times. First, uh, it's called In the Eye of the Storm. Toby! <laughs> in the Eye of the Storm, absolute quiet, a spring day in full bloom, poppies, purple martins, olives and pears budding awake, no inkling of the crisis about to engulf us, surrounding us already. We sink into time's teeth. The world will still be here when this is said and done, but will we? Scenes already crowding our days, a father taking a photo with his wife and daughter before heading to his restaurant essential job, because you never know. A young nurse contemplating mortality and a young son because she too is essential. Weddings postponed, festivals canceled, social life put on hold indefinitely. We must do that which runs counter to our very fiber, I-S-O-L, 
A T E isolate individual solo only lone accept time emotion even when it hurts to be apart the old order is dying queen elizabeth retires to her scottish castle her son charles is positive the uk disbanded perhaps breaks out of union borders erected yet we're more connected than ever online on heart on mind connection is everywhere we are indra's web a trillion points of light and if the grid goes what then we'll go back to till the soil grow squash and chard harvest honey from tireless bees pluck berries from the bush, sing songs and tell stories around the fire. Sometimes a fire is enough. In our greed and ignorance, we've forgotten those who polish our nails, grow our food, manicure our yards, serve us delights, tend to the sick and keep order in our towns. No more. Today, we look them in the eye and say a heartfelt thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for risking your life to bring us a bite, a stamp, some oxygen, and TP to wipe our ass. Bodies already pile up in skating rinks. No time for burials. No time for wakes. Sorrow is everywhere can properly say adieu to grandpa, to wife, to son, can gather to pay our last respects, life cheapened, cheated, as so many fall leaves swept aside. There is no separate self, as the old sages have said, only I in service of you, and you in service of me, an unbroken chain, no fear in the eye of the storm. So that was a little longer one from the end of March, 29th of March. And yeah, it's bizarre, you know, how it's the spring, beautiful spring, and yet the world seems to be falling apart all around us. And then for my other poems, I was going to read some from, from my book that showed Tammy uh, Codex of Love, published by Flowers on Books, here with Edward. Thank you. <laughs> Did a, a wonderful job with the cover and the production, and it's been a pleasure working with you. Thank you. And I'll read... Um, First, the poem in English and then in Spanish. I wrote it originally in Spanish and my friend Angie McEwen translated it into English. Your head lights up like the black forest. So many black hairs pulsating, vibrating. Your brain becomes visible. Veins throb. Your back is covered with intricate henna tattoos. You are Vishnu. I am Lakshmi, massaging your feet. And under that astonishing chemistry, you become the cosmos, life. Tu cabeza se enciende como la selva negra, montones de pelitos negros pululando, vibrando. Tu cerebro se vuelve visible y palpita de venas. Tu espalda se viste de intricados tatuajes de jena. Eres Vishnu. Y yo Lakshmi, masajeando tus pies, y bajo esa asombrosa química, te vuelves cosmos, vida. Oh, that's so beautiful in Spanish, I can't even take it. <laughs> I'm sorry, I, I can't not say something. I mean, what the heck, Liliana? <laughs> it's from it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> well, I have a couple other 
short ones uh, like that in English and Spanish. And, and this one was also translated by Angie McEwen. And it's inspired on a photograph. Um, it's called Click, Striking Worker, Assassinated, photo by Manuel Alvarez Bravo, 1934. Manuel just happened by on his when the strike came to an at new bodies versus at his feet, a young man in a neatly iron checkered shirt wearing pants with a belt spills his blood on the pavement, expires in a way. Yet Manuel with a clear Distinctive and arbitrary on his life a few seconds, just long enough to place it before. Manuel Bravo, Manuel pasaba por ahí, cámara al cuello, cuando la huelga llegó a su fin, el enfrentamiento, cuerpos jóvenes, delgados, contra balas duras. A sus pies, un joven, camisa a cuadros bien planchada, pantalón con cinturón, derrama su sangre sobre el pavimento. Se extingue, se va, pero Manuel con un clic instintivo, arbitrario, prolonga su vida por unos instantes hasta llevarla ante tus ojos. Mm. Hey, Liliana. Um... Do you think uh, Diallo or somebody in the house uh, just started uh, like a video game uh, tournament or something? Because it, it looks like your bandwidth is being impacted. And so you were dropping out in that in the, in the poems, the reading of that last poem. Oh, OK. Um, yeah, so the bandwidth was low on your end, where, uh, where you're at. Uh-huh, OK. Um, yeah, I mean, I could always, I'm in the, the back in my office and, and sometimes the signal is not as clear here. Mm -hmm. I could move inside. Uh, I don't know if that would make it better. Or, um, yeah, yeah, I just wondered, because sometimes if there are multiple people on you know, using the internet at the same time, I don't know, is this a high use time in your, uh, in your, fam in your house right now? Right. Yeah, just like maybe watching a movie or something. But okay. Well, um, yeah. if you want to maybe text them and then we'll come back to you. Yeah. That, okay. Let's do that. Um, because I'd hate for you, you know, to you know, to be cutting out and then we miss words because this is what we 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 uh, what our stock is in. It's in words. So. Um, yeah, so right. saying, uh, tell your kids to get off the Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah. I, and, I mean, and, and if they that. miss anything, right. you could always buy your book and <laughs> enjoy it. Hey, Edward, I'm going to introduce you next. Is that okay? And then we'll come back to Liliana. Okay. So, yeah, okay. Are, are your ladies off the, off the net or are they on the net right now? No sé. How do I sound so far? You sound great, yeah. So uh, Edward Vidare is uh, speaking to us from the Rio Grande Valley. And if you want to tell us a little bit about the festival coming up or uh, any other events that you're into right now that you're helping produce or manage, um, yeah, go ahead and give a shout out. And promo sure. Um, um, I'm going to just let everybody know to just uh, send me in, uh, any um you know, information if they want to know about it, because I don't know the exact, like, you know, info on it. But usually the last weekend of April, we have the Valley International Poetry Festival down here in South Texas. And it's, it's, it's been going on. This is going to be the 13th annual um, festival. It's, it's poetry. And we put together a, a, a wonderful anthology of, of, um, poets from around the world and and this year I was you know lucky to be able to take take over as director of operations of the festival and I'm doing the anthology through Flower Song Press and we've got poetry from all over the world um, we've got poetry from you know Palestine from Israel from Iraq 
from all over the United States, from Mexico. And um, we got poets laureate. We have, you know, award-winning poets. We have novice poets. And we have a youth section also. We have youth poetry in, in, in the, we have a first section and a second section. So um, it, it's, it's, it's a, it's a fat ass book, you know, it's, <laughs> um, I'm, we're still finishing it up. Um, so it, it's, it's a little less than 300 pages, but it, it's amazing. And, and the poets involved in it and, and who sent their poetry is, you know, they're, they're from all walks of life, you know, they're, they're they're award winners like i said and they're and they're just up and coming poets so that's very important i think to just just get them all meshed in together you know um it, it, it's awesome you know usually you look at i was reading a a, a book an anthology of poetry and everyone in that anthology was somebody that was known everyone everyone in there was somebody that was known. And I thought, you know, you can't do that all the time. You know, you have to have, you know, the up and comings and, 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 and mix them in with them, with their heroes. You know what I mean? You know, you, you, you've got to mix them in to be able to give them that inspiration to say, I'm in a book with Tammy. I'm in a book with Abraham. I'm in a book with, you know, Stalina. I'm in a book with Maria Miranda. I'm in a book with Edward. I'm in a book with uh, Naomi Shihab Nye. I'm in a book with, you know, uh, Liliana Valenzuela. We, we want people to be able to feel that, not just, you know. Yeah, our literary you know, that, elders. That, a, a, you know, the, there's books that feel like they're very elitist, you know, and, and, and that's something we I, I wanted to stay away from. So, Yes, we do have Naomi Shihab Nye in our anthology, in Boundless. We we also have high school students from Benitas, Texas. You know, nice. so nice. imagine that. You know, that to me is like I want to be that. You know, who do I want to be? Do I want to be Naomi? Or do I want to be that student from Benitas? I want to be that student from Benitas. You know, so to be able to say, hey, I'm in this anthology. So and knowing Naomi the way that I do, and I don't know her that well, but I've had some encounters and, and engagements with her. She would want to know that high school kid. She wouldn't want to be separatist at all. She's, she's a youth, you know, poet laureate, you know, and, and she would want to be part of that. So so to me, it's, her being part of it is, is perfect. You know, it's she belongs there. You know, mm -hmm. she belongs there for them and, and, and they're there for her, for her. You know what I mean? So, so it, it, it's, it's cool in, in so many different ways. First um, place, so. <laughs> uh, so, so yeah, it, 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 it's, we, we've got to do it that way. You know, we, we've got to get away, you know, and I do a lot of reading and I look at a lot of old anthologies and a lot of, you know, things that these, these old, you know, big time presses do and it's like I want to get away from that I don't want to do that you know I want to mix them I want to I, I don't want to feel like okay we're 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 here who are you no no we're all together we're all writing our now right we're all writing our today our history you know because your history in Utah and your history in New York and your history in California and Texas we're all writing about our today, but where we're at. So it, it's different, but it's, it's our now. And so it's our today. So our February, our, you know, March, whatever today is, because I've lost track of days and times and whatever. April, man. It's April. <laughs> Sorry to I don't even know what day it is. I don't know what, I, I know today is Saturday because tomorrow is Sunday. Because tomorrow I work. I want it's to send national, you. It's national Poetry Month. That's how it helps us know. Yeah, well, to me, National Poetry Month is going to go on until we either have a resolution to this or we have a revolution. I'm ready so to keep going. Yeah. There's no end to Poetry tonight? Month, you what know? You, what are you going to um, read? Something fresh and new of the now? I'm sorry? Are you going to read uh, something of the now or from one of your other i'm gonna read a little bit of both um okay. tell me what tell me what you want how much time do i have i i'm sorry i have a little jameson in me so okay well let's get going on this you got 10 minutes okay 
Lena and Liliana, she's gonna come back. She got special back. Well, this is how I'm going to die. Okay. I'm driving 40 miles an hour south on Bicentennial this morning, listening to Believe by the Bravery, and I don't hear the sirens approaching, nor the coming of the train. This is how I'm going to die. But maybe in August of another year. I'm still waiting, and I have a stack of books to read. My daughter still waits for me to come home after work, and I haven't seen my mother in a while. And the train will be coming real fast, like in the movies. In the train, a cargo of important metals, maybe even parts to make new shopping malls. Shit, I don't know what trains carry anymore. Maize, dirt, fuel, coffins. I'll have a perfect cup of coffee. And my house will not be my home anymore, nor my books need reading. I won't have any cigarettes to smoke. The big tree out front would seem to be looking away. All the homes as I drive will have their eyes shut. Every light as I drive green, as if pushing me away faster. I will pass by a man's shop with a sign that says, 70% off all men's suits. And I'll know which mannequin I'm wearing to my funeral. Mm. Mm. Reason I don't own a gun. I don't want to go out the Hemingway. Way out of this world, away from the fish I'm yet to catch. Fish, of, fish out of sea, sea out of this world, without, a master, without mastering the art of kissing, kiss, kiss, kiss away art. You see, who will tell the stories that only I can? Cuentos, the bloody ones, the ones hiding on the edge of death's lips, the bloody and bleeding cantos de sangre, sagrado corazón, sangre con cuentos, blood trails inside the stomach of the hanging tree have a voice. Voices of rotting fruit, of prison poems, of 20th century riots, of trigger-happy cops. But let's talk about the moon. La luna, moonshine, moonlight, light of the cachetona, fisgona, chismosa, luna, gossiping moon, mentirosa, and solstice. Who will uncover her true light if I go out the Hemingway? A witness to dream crossers. Poetas with riverbacks, never wetbacks, only setbacks, always wading in water, wading in compact spaces for the chota to drive away, 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 go away, but not the Hemingway. Who will uncover the abortion of the sun, the love song, the kissing deep tongue, la lengua de la garganta de la separada, separate but together, throat song con saliva, sin saliva, juntos, callejones cogidas, coger en callejones, apagando los salfones, and vibrate, vibrando, vibing and becoming the sun in a dark alley. I need to stay, the Hemingway stay, depressed, stressed, undressed, caressed, cuerpo de oso, oh, so close. But who will tell on the oligarchy? Who will bleed on paper, sangre, angry, lucha de lucha, de lechuza, su lucha, la lucha, la leche, leche de vaca, el gobierno es caca. Mascara, masquerade, massacre, mamadas, donde van esas? Code switch stories, switchblade cuentos, Duende, who will foster my duende when I'm gone? Duende, huérfano, sin familia, orphaned keys and orphaned pennies and orphaned poets y taquitos de muertitos. I don't own a gun. I don't want to be blamed. I don't want to be your terrorist. I don't want to be your brown man killer poster child. I don't want to break down the door to be to my sacred space. 
I don't want to be on a documentary on the anniversary of my death and your death and their deaths. Mm. So I wrote some COVID-19 poems and um, I'm just going to read those and whether I'm out of time or not, I'll be done. So, okay. Thank you. Thank you. This one is called Jazzista. What makes a jazz poet? Not his shoes, not mine, bent to one side like a matador waving a red trapo in la cocina to shoo away las moscas laying on the lip of my taza de café con leche. Definitely not a grito. Not writing a poem during a cool taku of Miles or Nina talking in French, bon sang. An election is tweaked to the sound of a trumpet solo. Now that zvucks like it sucks. Orale, cliche. Even as a Latino youth, we be real cool, but not too cool to be called a cool. Lo. <laughs> so we stay trucha, like Coltrane and Tito, Arturo, y Cachao, Bebo, y Bobo, stirring the beans with manteca de Gillespie. Jazzistas live like cucarachas. They lay low and grab you by the huevos when you least expect it. When everything around you seems to be dying, the only thing louder than a bomb is the slow death of a jazz sound. A hard jazz, an accusation. Yeah, a bop. A hard 12-bar pandemic. That's some greasy jazz. Very greasy, mantecoso. I love it. Images. The pandemic gave me a chance to see the wind and its curves and laces as she glides through me. Jazz gave me a dirty look. Spring is here and there is no Monday through Friday and Sunday is Friday and Saturday died. My mother knits with her sister and are aging together with love and remembrance. The mockingbird is learning new flight patterns to go with her new song. Children sit in tent cities still, still. Mm. Doctors and nurses are rock stars. When can we say rock stars are doctors and nurses? I'm afraid. Yet, I work through these ghostly streets of uncertainty. This is my last poem, and it's titled, oh no, I, I've got two more. I'm sorry, I let the whiskey get to me. I'll read Sleepless in Pandemia. I can't sleep much these days, yet I'm tired and I need to. I'm filled with strange dreams that seem to be building a mini series of grim realities at every turn. In the morning, I let out the dogs. There's a yellow haze that floats in my town, a stick to your skin enfermedad. This pandemic has me thinking, is there a God? Then I remember the stories, the poetry, and the prose of the antepasados, the faith of my abuela, the observation of nature's language. And I breathe in place, mm. pandemia, virus. We seem to be more together in this distance. This morning, the first flock of loros made their way to the wires above our house. Cantando, a grackle perched, head lowered at a distance. I lied, I have two more poems. Can we do one and then move back to Liliana, por favor? 
Huh? Can we just have one and then move back to Liliana so she no can finish problem. her reading? Okay. Cool. Okay, okay. God is an open wound, a kung fu movie, and a celestial sicario. God made our president with leftover road cotton and grackle droppings. His sandals are of leftover human skin from the factory of suicide rock stars. Today he wears the kneecaps of Janice to match his UFO belt. God is unfazed at the three. God is unfazed at 3 p.m. He whispers to me from a six feet distance. God lays naked on steel surfaces with his long hair covering the shadow of men. God has a sticker on his chest that reads, I voted. He's nonchalant. He has a twin. She does all the good work. Two, God is your God's God, yoga and breathing. She is the breath of life. Latex gloves and exhaling the sun over mountains. She is the blamed, the curve, the torn Achilles heel. God is a beat poet, the coming strain, the big question, the control, the last minute, mind changer, the finger on the gun, the safety switch. God is the ultimate filter, the event planner, the street cleaner, the thing in the sky that was there and then was not, the ventilator, the death toll. She knows the bodies are coming. Three, God is language, a lisp and stutter. God has Down syndrome, the autistic genius, the only child from the other side of the tracks. Have you ever thought of God as old, the wrinkled hobo and toothless smoker, the girl next door, the square-jawed bad hombre, creator of a new earth between ellipses, growing peonies on hyphens, God is soil and water, the trans angel, the monk making booze, the anorexic gargoyle breaking off a ledge. The movement in the painting, God's number is eight digits behind iron bars. The noisemaker, the vuvuzuela in pur purgatory, guilty. God is doing time. Four, God is a found poem in exile, an unbelievable truth, an asteroid belt crash, mammoth, that sound, that silence. Five. God is tired of rising on Easter. God is trying to figure out the diameter of this pandemic, writing ghostly hymns for the dead. Did you not know God was the celestial laureate? Skywritings, the sounds you hear in the mornings of birds and wind chimes, speeding cars and barking dogs. Did you think the sound was just that commotion? God writes those sounds into existence every day. I know when God is in a Motown mood, a hippie rock, or just lounging jazz mood. And when it's too quiet, God let the whiskey get the better of him. <laughs> yes. Mic's up for Edward. Woo! Thank you. Thank you. So much, great new work. Thank you for for uh, cataloging, cataloging the the despair, the confusion, the jazz, the love, everything of the moment. You know, so we don't forget, and so our young ones don't forget either. Liliana, we got you back. How you doing over there? Good, good. I hope you can hear me better now, <laughs> or that it won't be interrupted. But we'll see. Yeah, so far so good, and I love the green. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm sorry, go for it, Where, wherever you left off. Yeah, well, I'll read a, a couple of poems in English and Spanish to, to finish my set. Uh, thanks, Tammy. This one is in, in memory of my mother. It's called Mano de Plata, Silver Hand. In this open room, wet from rain, shadows bounce from curtains to windows. 
monochrome translucence, furry black and gray cape falls over her shoulders, light, diamantine, while she irons, hot silver hand, smooths chaos, slicks wrinkles, perfumes, hand that radiates sunshine, powerful motor of the heart, my mother. Mano de plata, en este cuarto abierto mojado de lluvia, las sombras brincan de la ventana a las cortinas. Tras luz monocromo, peludo abrigo gris y negro cae sobre sus hombros. Ligero, diamantino, mientras ella plancha. Mano de plata caliente, alisa caos, peina arrugas, perfuma con esa mano que irradia sol, poderoso corazón motor del corazón, mi madre. Mm. And I have one more. Uh, you know, usually in spring, I get together with a group of women and we go to the ranchito to write and reconnect. And this spring, we weren't able to do it, but this one was inspired for one of our times there. And it's called Rancho Coyote. The house newly painted, the kitchen can breathe again in a pale yellow with its stains, the years and the passage of time. Outside, those purple martins make their nests as they do each spring with hope brought from Brazil, cleansing the air of insects and feeding their young. The women write, reconnecting with one another and their own essence poking around their inner beings, searching, taking deep breaths and letting themselves not be in a hurry, recalling their ancestors and the long road they have traveled. Veils are lifted from my heart, laying open within the exposed beads, false steps, memories, my life marching by second by sec second, like in the movies. Silence the sense like fog covering us to saturation. We allow our beings to be lost in it, only to hear ourselves better and find the road that leads us home. Mm. Rancho Coyote, la casa pintada, la cocina respira de nuevo en amarillo pálido. Las manchas, los años, el paso del tiempo. Afuera las golondrinas purpúreas hacen sus nidos como cada primavera con la esperanza traída desde Brasil, limpian el cielo de insectos y dan de comer a sus crías. Las mujeres escriben, se reconectan unas con otras y con su propia esencia, hurgan, buscan, respiran hondo y se dejan ser sin prisas, recordando a los antepasados y su largo caminar. En mi corazón velos se descubren, se abren, Dejan ver en el interior latidos, pasos en falso, recuerdos. Mi vida desfilando momento a momento, como en el cine. El silencio desciende como la niebla. Nos cubre, nos satura. Nos dejamos perder en ella para escucharnos mejor. Para encontrar el camino de vuelta a casa. Thank wow. you. I want to go there. <laughs> I know. One of these days you'll make it, Tammy. <laughs> I know you're always invited, but <laughs> I know. And, and Edward, I don't know if you saw that you made a cameo on the first poem. I was inspired by your selfie with your family going off to work one day and just that you know thing of being an essential worker in many ways and taking your life in your hands every day. So, you know, it's precious moments. Liliana, somebody, uh, Lynn Lewis wants to see your earrings. Oh, yes. Uh, this were a gift uh, from a friend. I think she says she brought them from Barcelona. Ooh. And they're metal, but they're very, very light. Uh, and they're fun, you know. They're pretty. <laughs> They dance around. 
Well, so thank, thank you, everyone. Very Great nice. Evening, and I, I'm, I'm sorry for that interruption, but I, I'm glad that we did this so we could hear you, you know, clearly. For your yeah, son. it was probably also being back there, but I, I told my son to <laughs> take a break. <laughs> Live at the screen time. Oh, it's on the screen. So thank you so much, Liliana. If you want to uh, give us uh, your social media um, URLs, way to connect, because you might, you know, some folks here who've never heard your work before might want to follow you or, you know, know how to reach uh, you for your work. Uh, and uh, we can order Codex of Love uh, through Flower Song Books. And uh, I think Edward put that in the chat earlier, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, we can, we can lodge things there repeatedly if we feel like it. Yeah. Um, okay. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thanks. So our next reader is um, Stelina. If you want to unmute your mic, Stelina Villarreal, coming to us from Houston, Texas, right? Is that where you are right now? Yes, I'm in Houston. Okay. okay. Um, and the poem I'm going to read is about Houston as well. Um, and so this is a poem about, I was invited by a friend to write a poem about breath. And usually I write short poems, but I ended up writing a, re a really long poem for, the, for uh, this. And I also, it, it's a very uh, place specific uh, poem. So it is about Houston and uh, not all of Houston, just part of it, you'll hear it in the poem. And this poem I first read to an audience that was much like this one in which it, people were just listening to the poetry. But I've also read it w alongside some sound improvisers. And so what happened was that there was a vocalist and a couple of musicians and I performed, like I, we, we, I performed reading some of, the, some of the lines, but then like listening to the music and like trying to coordinate my tempo with their tempo. And th that ended up uh, being a really fun, event and i i can't do that in this kind of situation with the with the with the uh, social distancing but um i'm still glad that i'm able to be here with you all and thank you tammy for the invitation and thank you for the fellow featured readers and thank you for those of you who joined us so this poem is called breath distress At the first sound of vocal cords, the vibration of the body travels from belly to throat when a sigh is not enough, centering on guttural noises of my glottal childhood. My Mayan nanny whispered songs, I dream yet cannot remember. Migration separates us and I am transplanted as a child, four generations of immigrants and Magnolia, El Mismo Barrio, where my mom developed asthma. Es posible que la causa sea la contaminación, and the sigh is not enough. Father of environmental justice, Robert D. Bullard argues, environmental racism exists in neighborhoods where people of color face a polluting industry. He informs that we need procedural equity geographic equity, and social equity. In his article, Environmental Justice in the 21st Century, Race Still Matters, Bullard asserts, quote, the current system has one, institutionalized unequal enforcement, two, traded human health for profit, three, placed the burden of proof on the victims and not the polluting industry, four, legitimated human exposure to harmful chemicals, pesticides, and harmful substances, Five, present, promoted risky technology such as incinerators. Six, ex, exploited the vulnerability of economically and politically disenfranchised communities. Seven, subsidized ecological destruction. Eight, created an industry around risk management. Nine, delayed cleanup actions. And 10, failed to develop polluting prevention as the overarching and dominant strategy, unquote. And in Mismo Barrio, where diesel fuel gets emitted and sold, where trains leak chemicals, where tugboats and boats on ship channels pollute, where 18 wheelers and commercial buses exhaust, with Houston's lack of zoning laws, polluting industries neighbor houses, and a sigh is not enough. 
in el mismo barrio where graffiti gets tagged and painted over. The painters breathe toxic fumes and a sigh is not enough. En el mismo barrio where cancer is rampant. My abuelita had pancreatic cancer. I had skin cancer. Es un orgullo que respiro. My mama has primary peritoneal cancer. It's cancer of the lining of the abdomen. It has spread to her lung. And sighs are not enough. En el mismo barrio, where I cannot walk or bike without allergies and nasal congestion, hard to breathe. The short diaphragm of a sedentary lifestyle. It's even difficult to sigh. When I was in elementary school, I exercised. I used to roll down hills and mounds. Breathing seemed easy back then. There was a mound outside Gulfgate Mall and I didn't want to leave. My relatives pretended to leave, so I left. Ran away to a barrio neighboring my barrio. Big fifth graders on bikes found me on and took me to their grandmother's house. I am going to become part of their family, I thought. Granny called cops who sat me in the back where criminals sit. I was a runaway child. I was a runaway teen. At age 15, I was an affirmative action kid with financial aid, found the way to leave El Mismo Barrio, went to a boarding school in Chattanooga where my classmate erroneously called a Colombian a Mexican, where my history teacher defended the Confederate flag claiming that it represented the South, not slavery, yet the South was founded using slavery and I wanted to take away my breath. I thought of mi familia and that stopped me. I was a runaway child. I was a runaway teen. I have come back to give back in el mismo barrio for this land has character. I have come back to give back for these people from the barrio army. I have come back to give back, yet my sigh is not enough. I found a job that allows me to give back to my community by golf gate. I moved to where I ran away from, near the exhaustion of the freeway where the smog makes it hard to breathe and my sigh is not enough. One time I decided to work full time and go to school full time. The pressure broke me down and I tried to take my breath away. Luckily I was too lazy to ha have sharp kitchen knives and my sigh was deep. I read Amiri Baraka and silence seemed to equate death until silence became life and breath was once more. Every year I celebrate el orgullo que respiro. And as my abuelito says, Every birthday is one more year that I have lived and one more that I no longer have to live. Mm. I have come back to give back and in el mismo barrio, for this land has character. I have come back to give back. I have come back to give back, yet my sigh is not enough. Ooh. Oh. You're so brave to live in Houston. <laughs> Well, the it, it's not. I think it's not a coincidence that the father of environmental justice lives lives in Houston and and wrote about Houston, um, and and then and um, there's a there's a neighborhood called Fifth Ward, and I would say that that's the worst neighborhood because it has a lot of dumpsters. Um, but I grew up in a neighborhood that still had a lot of industry and I. Uh, it's there there's another there's another neighborhood that's really horrible because there's a valero uh industry like plantation next to it and um yeah it's really horrible is that manchester yeah manchester manchester yeah and so i'm gonna read w one really brief poem this one is also about environmental justice but the, the first the first poem i read is nonfiction. And the one I'm gonna read right now is fictional. Name and tumor removed. Invisible polluters, no shiny scalpel. The eye, desaparece. Your dorsal skin befuddled. You turn your back, expose the, the pores, burn red. The cells contort, mutate, mal, mal. Your toxin-induced hormonal shift minimizes your androgen. Your male hormones shrink personify an undeveloped coup. Mijo, despierta, your dove segment needs more vocal cords, silence. Chemicals burn a non-penis, or so you perceive your androgen to think so. I want, I love, after surgery, the doctor said, you scar well.
Ooh. Ooh. So that's all I have. That last one, how do you share that? Do you share that as a performance? Is it published? Is uh, what kind of context do you find that one to be the most uh, impactful? Where do you, where do you try to stab it? You know? Well, well, that last one is, is actually published in the Acentos Review. Okay. In, in one of the, in, in the, there, they have a, like a, they dedicated one to um, specifically environmentalism. And so that one was accepted for environmentalism. If you could uh, share the link for that, or, you know, uh, that'd be great. It doesn't have to happen now, but maybe in the, the event page. Thank you so much. Uh, you, you're, you're really uh, mapping out the terrain that, you know, in a way that people need to do, poets can only do because, um, you know, aside from the, the scientists and the, the teachers, the educators, and the media producers, the poets also bring in another voice, another um, another uh, perspective that's so needed and so necessary. So thank you. Thank you for being there. And you're welcome to visit us in North Texas where the air's a little bit better. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. And uh, let's see, Bronman, you wanted to do one. Can we ask for one uh, free, uh, open style piece you said you you were gonna maybe circle yeah, back yeah I want to do one um because uh I read those little form poems but you know I'm really a free verse girl <laughs> I guess <laughs> I don't know what I am anymore but okay go for, my, it. go for it my daughter picked this one out um for me to read today and I had forgotten that I'd even written it I don't remember writing it but I like it and I think it's appropriate for um the times right now because it's really um, about letting go and heartbreak as well. Uh, the kite. You have to stand with your back to the wind and let it blow past you if you want to fly a kite. A good enough breeze has to come along and you have to run with it. Hold it at the bridle point, then let the line out at the right time if you want it to fly. Fly, love. I will hold you back to the wind, hair in my face, if you've got to go. I will listen for the right whispers, truck for miles, arms extended, ready to let the line out at the right time, if you want to fly. I will take out the scissors from my pocket. I've been carrying them for a while. I will lift you and cut it out, the cookie we can't bite together however ideal the weather, and bid you farewell, that you and the blue sky might run off together. Mm. Hopeful. <laughs> That's Thank you nice so hopeful. much, Tammy. Thank you so much, Tammy, for doing this. That's a nice hopeful ending. Thank you. Uh, mics up, everybody. Count applauso. Woo! We're all in the space together. It feels good. 18 Bye. people. 18 good people. job, everyone. Thank you. It's Love it. Thank you, really Love it. Thank you. Thank you for the invite, Tammy. That was nice. Very, very nice of you to invite me. Thank you. Um, we have one more session for to round out the uh, National Poetry Month uh, series of uh, for Blast Your Own Breath. That's coming up next. Saturday, and one of our confirmed poets is none other than uh, Levi Romero, who is the new uh, recently announced Poet Laureate of uh, New Mexico. So he'll be on next Saturday nice. and some others. So please uh, come back again. Uh, you're always welcome to join as audience member. It's just so nice to feel uh, a resemblance of, you know, of uh, the readings where we're, you know, breathing each other's air. You know, I miss that. I miss that so much. Cheers to all of you. This is really <laughs> bad wine. I can't drink it, but cheers to you anyway. <laughs> Salud. 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 So, um, Salud. Anything else that you want to share or say, you could put it on the event page or message individual people here as you like. Um, I'll, I'm willing to take the heat if you have any complaints well or suggestions for how this could improve. I'm learning every time I do this. Lynn Lewis, you witnessed so many of these, so you've 
probably got a, a grip on how this could be improved or how it's improved so far. Um, I'm going to stop recording and, uh, and y'all can stick around and chat or uh, make your way off to the rest of your beautiful, beautiful, safe and healthy night. Thank you, Tim. Peace so, out, yo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Be well. Sleep well. Yeah. Oh, wonderful, Tammy. So much better than the first one. <laughs> well, it, everything is better than the first one. Yeah, that was true. It, it's great. It's been great. <laughs> Gracias, Liliana. I saw the I saw your page, and that's why I was like, "Woo, reading tonight!" I, I otherwise, you know, we were connected because we were watching Azul. I was also watching part of the One World concert. <laughs> that's right. I was oh, doing yeah, that too. Right. And then I was like, "Oh, I need to get ready." Okay. Mm -hmm. Jose, thanks for being with us. You got any comments? Thanks for hanging out. Oh yeah, it was yeah. great. I was just in the background listening, so it was awesome. Jose and I are actually working on a, a new uh, initiative. He's um, creating some um, puppets out of carton for uh, a piece that uh, I've written. It's a, a bird poem. And so he's shaped some models together and we were meeting before we had to go shelter in place. And I look forward to getting back on that with you, Jose. Yeah, for sure. So still working on them slowly, but we'll, we'll get there. Yeah, yeah, sure. not to worry. What are some of the tools nice. in the, in the back of, you, of, of uh, Jose's wall? What, what are those tools or? Oh yeah, that's just kind of everything that I've accumulated over the years, just kind of, you know, painting, um, just, yeah, my tools that I use. So I got my own little studio in here. Cool. So yeah, I enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks so much for hosting, Tammy, and, and you're already a pro. I'm impressed. <laughs> oh, not quite, but I, I've learned, I've been rolling with the punches like Anna was referring to. Uh, we, we did get uh, zoo, Zoom bombed, and that was um, really excruciating and uncomfortable, but we got through it, and now I know uh, what, uh, how to set the, put the settings so that we don't allow those things to happen again so yeah i can't hear you anna your mic is off on mute okay uh getting the invitation to that was great because last week i forgot because it was a facebook thing and so this <laughs> week you had the invitation sent which was wonderful because i had it on my calendar so no, i remember it's always the invitation has always been on the Facebook event. You just have to click on it. And some no, people but I wasn't on Facebook. And ah. so that's the thing. But this time you sent it and you had something that it went on to your Google. And, yeah, so, it'll, and I was it'll, able to put calendar. it on my, own, on my own calendar. And that was yeah. great. Yeah, that was really good. Yeah, I'm trying to keep a list of all the people who visited or who have um, uh, registered. And so then I can uh, batch all of their emails together and invite them to the subsequent reading. So uh, yeah. I have cool. a Zoom meeting, Zoom poetry reading uh, email list. So I can cool. blast, you know, at the same time, you know, if I continue to do these, you know, I've got one more scheduled this coming Saturday, like I said, and um, I, I have a feeling I might want to do this some more and namely, well, mostly because uh, I don't drive. And it's hard for me to travel to a lot of readings, but I like the idea of being present this way virtually, even when we are driving again and being in close proximity. The, 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 I think this is brilliant. The idea I had that came to me today is for presenters when they are presenting um, people to go and you know, be their keynote or their, uh, their, their featured poet instead of spending money to for transportation to bring the poet in to fly them in or pay for their gas you know driving expenses etc they could just up their honorarium if you're bringing them in virtually and some people may prefer to do that in the future 
you know mm -hmm. it may be that this is a viable uh platform for a long time to come and uh there are really creative ways to use it too that i'm just learning about also like um like if you like jose if you reach up right now like you're uh pushing like this can you um, do that with your hands like me do it yeah do, do, yeah push. like yeah and keep pushing and then i i rise so see and then you lower your hands and then i come down so there's some performative aspects to this that are just starting to be explored and um and that's going to be more interesting to me as a performing artist you know how to use these squares you know maximally uh, you not only with the backdrops the lighting like i have a a little um floor lamp next to me so it creates nicer light uh so you know these are things the aesthetics of zoom meetings i think is going to be something we're going to be talking about and working with for a long time to come. Mm. Well, thank you very, very much. This was wonderful. And Liliana, I have to say, I really loved your poetry. I love hearing it in Spanish.